Uh, bless the Lord. We're going to continue in the book of John. Uh, just remembering uh, days of old, young in the ministry. And one of the things that I used to study all the time was the book of John. Uh, along with Psalms and Proverbs. But I stayed with the things that, uh, that helped me have a closer walk with the Lord. A lot of times we want to read the Bible and and go through the Bible and it, it doesn't have nothing to do with salvation. It's, it's good, it's historical, but I, I do believe that the more we begin to uh, search the scriptures that we may live upright before God and be Holy Ghost filled and concentrate on the things of God that, you know, God will... Uh, fill in the blanks for everything else. And we still dealing with um, the third chapter and the first chapter of John where Nicodemus was talking about being born again. I made reference before how Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jews and he was a Pharisee. So it was things that he studied and known. And I'm quite sure he read the scriptures in Isaiah, the 40th chapter. He said, comfort ye, comfort ye my people, says your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished and that her iniquities is pardoned. For she have received of the Lord hand double for all her sins. The voice of him that cried in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight and the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough place plain. But the main focus right now I want to talk about is, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. And the voice said, Cry. And he said, What shall I cry? And all the flesh is grass, and all the goodness thereof is as a flower of the field. And the grass withered away, and the flower faded, because the Spirit of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people is grass. God was letting them know what was going to happen. Uh, with the children of Israel in the future. And when that day came, the things that they read about of old came to pass in their lifetime. They wasn't ready for it. They wasn't ready for it at all. They wasn't ready to accept them. They wasn't ready to know that the scriptures was being fulfilled in their time. And Jesus had to reiterate and let them know all the time, this is what you read of me. I am the one that you read of concerning the prophecy. And the word of God, as we go back in John, it says, And the word of God was made flesh and, and dwelled among us, and we held his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And then it says, John bear witness of him and crying, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me, he is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fulfillment was all received as the grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, and but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. When we begin to uh, just go into the word of God and begin to uh, look at what God is saying in our lives, that we have to get to a point where we allow the spirit of God to have dominion over our life. Paul says it in Galatians, the second chapter. He says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We, we, we went through that before talking about how the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in us. Paul began to let us know that that spirit should have dominion over our lives and change us. 
the flesh shall die daily. Things in our lives shall leave and new things of God. The way we handle things should be, okay, Lord, speak to me and give me the words to say to this person. Give me the wisdom how to handle this situation. Let me encourage somebody. Let me not point out their faults, but let me show them the love of God no matter what state they are in, that God loves them. And if they begin to just yield their members, their body, their mind, their heart, their soul over to the Lord. God will change. He will intervene. And and that is what is established when we are born again. When we are babes in Christ. When, when, whenever we begin to hunger and thirst after the word and begin to just take what the man of God say and then go home and study it and pray about it and let God minister it, it to us so that we will be able to walk each and every day in the things of God. And, and when we begin to do that, God will be able to help us and God will be able to bless us. And as we begin to read the word of God and we begin to meditate on it, God will bless us. And John, the 14th chapter, is lets us know, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whosoever I have said unto you. Well, uh, I'm sorry, not whosoever, but whatsoever I have said unto you. Well, the Holy Ghost, first you got to get in God's word. A lot of times I hear people say, oh, I get so confused with the dials and the D's and the names and that I can't pronounce. So, you know, the Bible also said that it's going to come a time that we be without any excuse. Why? Because technology and the help that we have to read God's word, we'll be able to get it. So we without any excuse. There's so many translations that you can line up. And and I, I usually have two or three different translations. And I, I try to zero it in with, with prayer and, and asking God to let me understand what he wants me to know from the word of God today. And that comforter is the Holy Ghost. See, even reading God's word shouldn't be grievous. I hear people say that it's hard. No, ain't nothing hard about God's word. If you had, for example, a, a table... And it had to be put together. And you look at that, uh, the directions, and they give you the blueprint of it. And you look at all these pieces that you got to put together. You put it together. It's the same way with the Word of God. All that's in the Word of God is a blueprint on how to navigate yourself in this life. And guess what? If, if you want to know God the same way you want to build that table or put that bike together or or put whatever it is that takes directions to do it, do it the same way with God. And guess what? You'll love the results of it because when God's in it, it's a beautiful thing. When you read in Genesis, it says all that God made was good, you know? So when you begin to understand the things of God, through God, God will manifest it and, and let you know. And guess what? Everything that you read about God, you will remember because it will come back. The Holy Ghost will store it for you. And in that situation, God will be there for you and let you know. And once we understand that, God will bless us. I'm, I'm just going to pause now on this. I want you to just think about times of old, young in the ministry. When you was a babe in Christ, when you ate every word that God laid out before you, when you ran to the church, when you was at the altar, when you was crying out to God. And the, the word of God says this. This is one thing that's so simple. It says, if you call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. If you call on that name, he shall deliver if you call on that name, sometimes you just got to just cry, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. A lot of times we don't even want to cry out, Jesus, 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 unless we have an IV in our arm and we got something more in our mouth and they've given us oxygen. And then you want everybody to come around and cry, Jesus, call on the name of the Lord so you can be healed. Well, if you call on the name of the Lord while you have breath in your body and in your right mind, he'll come and heal you. And then you can store 
some of those calls that you made to Jesus up that when trouble time comes, sickness come, God will minister to you and give you the wisdom to let you know what to do in that time of trouble when you're in distress. Oh, that man will praise the Lord for his wonderful works unto the children of men. Each time that the children of Israel was in distress or something was going on in their life, they called on God and God came to live. So what makes you think that he can't do that for you? But the, the key is, when the last time that you spent time crying out to God, calling on him until he answered, just like a baby calls on his mother. The mother know that cry when that baby is sincere, and the mother know when that baby just want attention. A lot of times we just go to church and be in service just for attention. We're not sincere about our crying out to the Lord. I dare you. I, and Sister Silva used to say that to me all the time. I dare you. I dare you to cry out to God with all this within you. I dare you to call on the name of the Lord. I dare you to spend some time at that altar until God replenish you. I dare you. I dare you.